So this is the Google Pixel 6 Pro, the latest flagship from Google themselves. And today I'm gonna to be comparing it to my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, when I first saw the kind of final leaked images of the 6 Pro, what feels like forever ago, I was really stoked because anytime a new camera manufacturer makes a big change to the camera bump, or we can tell that there's definitely been a redesign or upgrade to the camera technology, I get excited because that generally means that the camera is intended to be like next level or very, very good. Now, Pixel phones have always been good cameras, mostly thanks to the software. We all pretty much know this by now. The hardware is relatively mediocre and the software is what kind of picks up the slack where the hardware fails. They totally upgraded both the front and all of the rear cameras in the back. Now, just in case you're new around here, in this video, we're primarily gonna be talking about video. There's tons and tons of videos out there right now about the photography, even comparing it against the iPhone. I don't take a ton of stills anymore, so we're gonna be mostly talking about the video aspects. But I do wanna start out with just talking about my general feel and overall use of the phone itself with the redesign and everything. Now, in terms of color, this honestly, like I, d I don't really like, this is not my vibe. Um, this would not be the color I would have chosen. I think the white or the black or dark gray one look awesome. My wife personally loves this color. This is very much her aesthetic, so this phone may go to her afterwards. But besides that subjective opinion, I think the phone itself looks fantastic. Now, while I do very much prefer the squared off edges that the iPhone has, this kind of curved display is still nice. The camera bump, I like the fact that it is just a straight up visor all across the screen because that means that when you set this down on a table, you don't have the same rocking that you do on basically every other phone. The screen looks great. The materials feel very high quality as we've all come to expect nowadays. I will say the Pixel 6 with the matte finish I really like that look compared to the glossy of the Pro. Again, that's completely subjective, but overall the design I think is really nice. Now when getting into the software, we have unlocking the screen. And since this is nowhere near the first Pixel video, I am not gonna be the first one to tell you that the fingerprint sensor is disappointingly slow. And that's really disappointing because I like under the screen fingerprint sensors but it definitely was making me miss the Face ID on my iPhone because that just feels instant now. Now, once you unlock the screen, the screen itself looks very nice. I know a lot of people obsess over screen specs and high refresh rates. Again, it's all nice to have. I don't really care for it. Now, my final point before we get into the camera stuff, Android 12, I am absolutely in love with. I think it is way more just pretty to look at and more fun to interact with. And going back to my wife liking the color, she actually said that if she were to choose an Android phone, this would be the one after using Android 12. And I know you don't know her, but that's saying a lot. All right, so now let's talk about the cameras. Now, once we switch into video mode, we can see that we have a handful of settings in the stock camera app. I was a little disappointed that they didn't have more. Um, but basically you get your normal, you know, tap on the screen uh, to change your focus. But this will also bring up a couple settings that I do like. Definitely better exposure settings than what you have on the iPhone, which is just kind of tapping and going up and down. Or in ProRes, you now have that uh, kind of EQ slider. But over on the Pixel, you can individually control the highlights and the shadows, as well as the color temperature, which is really nice. The only feedback I would give for these is to give actual like numbers. I hate when you get like a color temperature slider and you just have like, you know, blue on one side and yellow on the other and then you're kind of just scrolling. I totally get the average consumer, that's all you need. But if you wanted to add a little bit of pro functionality to that, put actual numbers for it so I can see where 5600 Kelvin is or 45 or whatever number I want to set it to. Now on the Pixel, you actually do get a handful of stabilization options as well. While the iPhones is just kind of whatever the built-in stabilization is, which you can turn off in a third-party app, uh, here you have your standard for just regular movement. That's the default. You have locked, which is intended to be like if you forgot your tripod, it will just 
act like the camera's not moving at all, but that does activate the two times zoom. So you are definitely losing quality uh, with that. Personally, I would never use that stabilization setting. You have active for heavy movement and cinematic pan. Now these can be fun to play with. When you get the phone, play with all these settings to see which ones you like, because some of them are kind of jittery and they're, they don't look very smooth. Most of the time I just left it to default. Um, I played around with cinematic pan since that sounds like it would be the most common sense one to use, but even that one kind of hit or miss and the unreliability of it always concerns me. Now to get more settings, you just have to tap on that little settings and arrow icon in the top or off to the side. And here you have very basic settings. You can choose between 4K and full HD, and then depending on what you're shooting in, either 30 or 60 FPS, or if you are shooting in full HD, you can have the auto frame rates, which I understand again as a consumer, but I would, I would never set my phone to an auto frame rate. And when I first saw this, I was like, okay, that's fine. Like this is what most Android phones look like in terms of the stock camera settings. I'm gonna go into more settings and see the advanced stuff. And so I go to camera settings and I start to scroll and I start to scroll and I'm like, okay, looking for the advanced video settings. Oh yeah, there are none. And this is where my disappointment kind of comes into place because again, I was so excited for the camera, but when I knew I wanted to stack it up against the iPhone, it was really hard looking on paper how they would even compare. Here you have a phone that can shoot 10 bit and the first phone to have a professional codec of 10 bit ProRes HQ, while here the best you can do is 8 bit H265. Now what 8-bit means is that don't even attempt to download any third-party app that's gonna give you like a log mode. Log is straight up useless. If you're shooting in 8-bit, you are not gonna be able to color grade it to any sort of decent look. 8-bit, you have to kind of get your settings right in camera for the look that you want. So play around with the color temperatures and the highlights and shadows and get it as close as possible in camera because what you're gonna be able to do on the computer or even editing later in some other, uh, you know, color grading app on the phone is gonna be extremely minimal. See, and after using both of these phones kind of side by side the past couple of weeks, on paper, you have the like abundantly clear winner. It's the iPhone. Like you, you can't even argue from a stats or specs point of view that this camera even remotely uh, has the capabilities that this has. But in actual real world use, is it that far off? There were plenty of moments that I preferred the Pixel 6 Pro's image over the iPhones and the other way around, or a lot of scenarios where they were so close that, you know, if you removed the label and just showed me them side by side, I'd be flipping a coin to guess which one was which. I very much agree with a lot of the reviews out there that the Pixel 6 Pro relies so much on its post-processing um, abilities that it goes crazy on the HDR look. So subjectively, if you're into that look, you want those shadows raised and those highlights dropped, then this is definitely a phone for you. A lot of those shots, I really prefer the iPhones more natural. I'm okay with not crushed blacks, but definitely darker shadows rather than lifting them up so much. Or again, having the 10 bit, uh, you know, Dolby Vision color science that I can actually raise it in post to have a little bit more control rather than this just being super contrasty, super punchy in HDR and not really easily being able to get a flat image out of it that in my opinion looks a bit more cinematic. I will say in low light, I don't know if it's the post-processing or anything, but I was a fan of this a lot of the time. The noise just looked cleaner. Even shooting in ProRes on the iPhone, the noise got pretty muddy for this uh, specific example, and the pixel shot actually kept pretty sharp. And so it's moments like that that I do see the beautiful marriage of better hardware and Google's amazing post-processing skills. My biggest problem with the Pixel 6 Pro is the inconsistencies of the look. Maybe I would just have to use it as my full-time phone for months to really be able to be like, huh, okay, I want a picture or a video of this, 
So I need to know, you know, this settings and these lenses to shoot with and kind of get the muscle memory for the phone uh, for every scenario out there. But every time you go back and forth between the ultra wide, the wide and the telephoto, they have pretty different color tones and different forms of contrast and just different looks that don't really match all that well, in my opinion. And the iPhone's not perfect in that way either. Don't get me wrong, there is a very like easy to tell difference between the uh, quality on the ultra wide wide and telephoto but with the 13 they definitely close the gaps on that and yes this does have a four times zoom which does get you further than the iphone but to me the quality was even worse it almost looked like a digital zoom on a bright sunny day it was fine but in almost every other scenario it just it didn't do it for me so how do i tell the winner between two phones for me, it's quite simple. Whenever I am out and about and I see a moment that I want to capture, which phone am I going to take out first? Which phone do I know is going to give me the best shot? The iPhone continues to give me a reliable and consistent look that I know I'm going to be happy with and be able to edit into something I really enjoy. The ProRes this year makes this a near impossible phone to beat in terms of video, in my opinion because I've been able to cut iPhone footage into professional commercial projects. And of course, if I wanna film like a behind the scenes for YouTube video and mix it in with my Blackmagic footage, it's still a phone, but it shoots incredible video. While the Google Pixel 6 Pro takes amazing photos and video in the right situations. And while everyone is out here living different situations, for the majority of mine, this just didn't give me the best image possible. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree. Do you think I was totally far off? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, don't forget to get subscribed. And if you want to see me put my iPhone 13 Pro Max up against my Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, you should check out this video over here. And here's another video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.